Hector Torres was living in the basement because his wife told him to. He had done nothing wrong, committed no matrimonial transgression. He simply worked at the wrong place. The irony of it was he had taken the job at his wife's urging. He had spent 11 years unemployed, ever since losing his $170,000 per year tech industry job during the Great Recession. He had fallen into despondency and depression, the trough of the 50-something person cast aside in an industry that privileged youth. The family had gotten by on the income of his wife, Laura, who sold training sessions for medical diagnostic equipment, but they eventually had to downsize to a smaller house in the Denver suburb where they had moved after fleeing their $5,500 monthly mortgage in the Bay Area in 2006. Eventually, Laura had issued an ultimatum. If Hector didn't get a job, he couldn't stay. So he had left, moving back with his family, Central American immigrants who had settled in California decades earlier. He lived with his older sister's family in an exurb of San Francisco. If he left the house, he had to be home by 8.30 every night so as not to disturb his brother-in-law, who woke at 4.30 every morning for his long drive to Silicon Valley, making him one of the more than 120,000 Bay Area workers who commuted more than three hours every day. After five months of this, Hector had accepted Laura's offer to return on the condition that he get a job, which he finally did half a year later, in June 2019. He was driving by the warehouse one day, and saw a sign that they were hiring, and pulled over and asked about it, and they said he could start the next day. He worked overnights, four nights a week, typically from 7.15 p.m. to 7.15 a.m. He worked all over the warehouse, stacking boxes in outbound trailers, loading packages onto pallets, and inducting envelopes and packages, which meant standing at the conveyor belts for the entire shift, there were no chairs on the warehouse floor and transferring hundreds of items per hour from one carousel to another, while turning them right side up so that scanners could read their codes. He lifted a lot of boxes, some as heavy as 50 pounds. The challenge wasn't so much the weight as that you couldn't really tell, based on size, whether a box was going to be heavy or not when you went to pick it up. Your body and your mind never knew what to expect. He wore a back brace for a while, but it would get so hot that he felt like he was being cooked. His elbow tendonitis flared up. He often walked more than a dozen miles per shift, according to his Fitbit. He thought the device must be wrong and got a new pedometer, but it said the same thing. He put on a topical numbing cream before he went to work, took ibuprofen pills while he was at work, and when he got home, stood on ice packs, put ice on his elbow, and soaked his feet in Epsom salts. He switched shoes often to spread the impact across the sole. He made $15.60 per hour, a fifth of what he was making at the tech job, and infinitely more than what he was making unemployed. The warehouse in Thornton, 16 miles north of Denver, had opened just a year earlier, in 2018. Its general manager, Clint Autry, was a seven-year veteran of the company who had already helped open several other facilities around the country. He had even helped test the radio wave emitting vests that workers wore when they had to step near the path of the drive unit robots that carried around big tubs of merchandise to warn off their fully automated co workers. The whole name of the game is getting the product to the customer in the quickest, most cost effective way based on shipping costs, Autry declared on a grand opening tour of the building. The ramp up at the warehouse started in mid March of 2020, same as everywhere else around the country as the coronavirus lockdowns took hold. Orders soared to holiday levels as millions of Americans decided that the only safe way to shop was from their home. It was just nine months into Hector's time at the company, yet he was the only one who remained from his orientation class of 20. The others either hadn't been able to handle the pace or had gotten injured, or had been terminated because they had run out of excused absences after getting injured. Now turnover had climbed even higher than usual, as many decided they couldn't handle the stress of the surge and the risk of the close quarters in the warehouse. As the number of workers dwindled, the pressure on those that remained rose. The company demanded that Hector work overtime, five 12-hour night shifts per week. With longer shifts and one less day of rest, the tendonitis got worse. Thank you for listening to this clip provided to you by Macmillan Audio. 
To hear more, look for this title wherever audiobooks are sold.